Welcome in, everybody, to Betting Pros. It's time to place your bets. It is me, Joey P. Joe P. Zapia. Week three is just about concluded. A few games left here on Monday night. You can catch us 5 p.m. Eastern every single Monday live on the YouTube channel, breaking those games down on Monday and Thursday night. Myself and Scott Fogman. But this year, this is about looking ahead. And man, oh man, I'm depressed. It was a bad week for me. I is terrible this week. I'm going to take all the L's here because I thought there were some really good things here. I was very happy about outside the Chiefs. That's like the only thing that went right for me. God bless you, Taylor Swift, for making sure that you, you had Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes motivated. Hopefully these two gentlemen had better weeks than I do. We could take it through a good week four as we continue on. Pat Fitzmorris joins us. Sam Hoppin joins us. Of course, you could check out all of our amazing content at Betting Pros. Sammy Boy repping the Green Bay Packers gear. Feeling pretty good about that Jordan Love homecoming. So uh, I think you're in a good spot here to win this division because it ain't going to be the Bears, and it certainly doesn't feel like the Vikings can win anything, Sam. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about this pre-show. I do think the Vikings still do have a chance because they they haven't played anyone in the division yet. They, they have some opportunities to make up some ground with those games, and they've just gotten terribly unlucky. I'll talk about it a little bit later, but with the turnovers, it's just been bad and and you would expect some of that to regress a little bit in season even though everyone's talking about how well they did on one side in in one score games last year versus this year so uh certainly looking good for our our green bay packers though yeah uh that that under came in on that charger game with the minnesota vikings uh one under that did not come in was the uh, Miami Dolphins, Fitz. I mean, they scored enough points here for uh, uh, several games. Like, you could have took the Jets game, combined it with another game, and still probably uh, not caught up to the, the Miami Dolphins. Uh, I can't imagine going forward. I think this is going to be a real challenge here. This offense could continue to just take off and be something very special. But that was a show of shows. Bad showing for the Denver Broncos. But I think uh, the big takeaway is Miami's offense, without Jalen Waddle even, was stunningly good yesterday, Fitz, historically so. It was, Joe, and uh, credit to you. I think you were on the Dolphins uh, last week on this show. I, I believe <laughs> you like them, and I just I wasn't really interested in that game at all, and I just, like, this This Broncos defense was actually good last year, or, or like above they average, were. at they least. Were. So it's hard to understand what exactly has happened here, but uh, it, it's going to be a, a test of the, um, you know, d mediocre offense versus the mediocre defense when the Bears and Broncos get together this week. And mediocre is really being kind, quite frankly. I mean, this is, uh, yeah, so it, it will uh, be interesting to see what gives in that game. The Denver Broncos, the first team in NFL history to give up 350 yards in the air and on the ground. Congratulations, Broncos. <clears throat> I mean, somebody's got to get fired today for something. I don't know who it is, but, uh, you know, this is usually when heads roll. But look, before we get going, don't forget, everybody, we've got free stuff for you here at Betting Pros. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Drop a comment below. Give us your favorite picks of week four that you like in the early look ahead. And you just might win a James Cook autographed jersey. Thanks to us here at Betting Pros. So again, subscribe, drop the comment, and click that bell till it goes ding so you know if you're the winner of the big James Cook jersey. Let's move on here to Thursday Night Football. Your Green Bay Packers, gentlemen, are going to host the Detroit Lions. Speaking of in-division matchups, this one is real spicy. Uh, you've got the Green Bay Packers, two-point home underdogs. 45 and a half is the number at Sugar House right now. 44 and a half, you can get that over on Caesars. And if you like the Packers to win at home uh, in that dog situation on the money line right now, FanDuel's got the best number, plus 106. So let's take us through here. In your opinion, Fitz, uh, is this line correct? Number one. And number two, do you see any early value? I do think the line is correct, Joe, and, and this does feel like a battle for NFC North supremacy. We know the Bears aren't going to be uh, battling for anything, and uh, the Vikings, yeah, maybe they've had some bad luck, but that, that defense is pretty legitimately Horrendous. terrible. Yeah. So um, this is also a Packers revenge game after the Lions knocked them out of the playoffs in the final game of the 2022 regular season. Um so Jared Goff has made four starts against the Packers since joining the Lions, lost his first one, has won the last three. Um, I don't know that I like either side here, Joe, but I, I sort of like the under. Both Lions-Packers games played under last season, and the Packers continue to be very slow-paced mm. offensively under Matt LaFleur. Yeah, especially with the Thursday night game, I kind of lean where you are right now on this one with the under. Sam, what's your early instinct, if any, on this line? 
I actually took the Packers money line this morning. I do think there is a little bit of value. I don't think that Detroit is three points better than Green Bay on a neutral field, which is what this line is indicating. The Packers are dealing with a ton of health concerns. Jair Alexander was out yesterday. Devondre Campbell left early. The left side of the offensive line is is nowhere to be seen right now, but they've still allowed just a 21.5% pressure rate, which is great. It's second in the league. Green Bay still doesn't have a game with all of Bakhtiari, Aaron Jones, and Christian Watson playing together this year. And I do think that they might have held some of those guys out on Sunday, knowing that they had the Thursday night game against a divisional opponent at home. And so I think at least two of those three guys will be active on Thursday night. Green Bay's been sort of living off of explosive plays so far this year. They have a pretty low success rate, but a a fairly high EPA per play. But Detroit allows the sixth highest rate of explosive pass plays on defense. So I think this is another opportunity for Green Bay to to steal another victory on, on Thursday night. It's a great point about Watson and Aaron Jones, too. If they are active, this is the time to jump on that money line number right now uh, because that could very well be the case of why they were just holding them a little bit longer because this is the game you have to win. This is the in-division contest that means the most uh, in the standings anyway. So let's get to the next one here. Jacksonville Jaguars took a big fat L <laughs> against the Houston Texans. Ooh, we at home. They are now one and two. Atlanta Falcons. Cinderella is uh, finally got a uh, loss themselves. So both these teams coming off losses in week three. Right now we got Jacksonville, your standard minus three right now at home. That feels about right as we're trying to figure out the identity of these two teams. 45 and a half is the number for the under here at Bet Rivers. 43 and a half at FanDuel if you like the over. And then if you like the money line, Bet 365 has the Falcons to win outright at plus 145. When you look at this line, Sam, what do you see? I see the line you know, it, giving you an opportunity to buy Trevor Lawrence at his lowest. I mean, he has not played exceptionally the first three weeks of the season. Played okay against Houston in, in uh, week one, or not Houston, uh, Indianapolis, excuse me. Um, Indianapolis, and then yeah. didn't fare very well against the Chiefs and then didn't play well this past week either. And I think they're sort of realizing that they can't just throw the ball to Calvin Ridley 12 plus times a game and win that way they need to get some of these other playmakers involved but Trevor Lawrence is still a a much better quarterback than Desmond Ritter he Ritter had a negative 14.2 percent completion percentage over expectation last week which is is not great especially against a Detroit defense that again we just talked about hasn't been great defending the pass and it currently looks like this is shaded towards Atlanta. I wonder if we see this get down to two and a half Jacksonville in their home away from home playing in in London. So they have that bit of familiarity as well. So I'd be taking Jacksonville with the points here. Pat, Sam makes a good point here. This is the way to buy uh, Trevor Lawrence at the lowest point. Are you buying him at this lowest point here this week? I'm really not, Joe. Um, yes, the the Jaguars have a big quarterback advantage here, but the Falcons and Arthur Smith generally do a pretty good job of hiding Desmond Ritter in that offense, and at least that's certainly what they're trying to do each and every week. Um, like I see these two teams of roughly equal caliber, and I was kind of surprised to see the Jaguars favored by what three three points in this one. Um, let me ask you guys, what do you think? We know the Jaguars don't have a standard home field advantage in this one with the game being in Wembley Stadium. What would you say their advantage is as far as an operational advantage? So far, they've played nine London games. This will be their 10th. They're four and five so far. It's got to be worth something, but probably not worth the standard two points for home field advantage. Uh, That's a really good question, Pat. I mean, I think it's worth a little bit. Uh, That being said, Sam, do you see any advantage of the fact that they have been sort of like the default London team these last five, six years? I certainly think so. I I don't think it's as big of an advantage as as people might think it is because there's so much science around, you know, when to sleep, how to, you know, recover from jet lag. and, And these are the best of the best athletes who know how to do all of this sort of stuff. And it's not like nobody in Atlanta is 
you know, just not familiar with traveling overseas. So I do think there is a little bit to it. I mean, I would make it, you know, maybe close to a half a point, uh, if that it right now, but it's, uh, I think it, I, th- I still think Jacksonville is going to get the win here. All right, moving on to the next game here on the slate, too, for time. We've got Pittsburgh and Houston. Now, Houston coming off their first victory. CJ Stroud looking good. The passing game looking good. Nico Collins, Tank Dell. We just talked about all those guys in the waiver wire podcast on Fantasy Pros Fits. So, 41 is the number on FanDuel. Houston, of course, is a four point underdog at home, which makes sense. Now, Pittsburgh minus three on DK is what you can get right now. Uh, but, you know, that Pittsburgh secondary, Pat, has not played well this year. I think we can all agree on that. Yes, they get after the quarterback. That is their saving grace on defense. And offensively, I mean, it's still a work in progress. I mean, still trying to figure out their identity. They had some moments, they had enough moments where they squeaked by last night. But what is your takeaway, if any, from last night, what we saw from the Pittsburgh Steelers and what you see in this early line here? Yeah, if you can keep T.J. Watt and his friends off your quarterback, you can do business against this Pittsburgh secondary. And I think the Texans' passing game has been much more advanced than we thought it was going to be. C.J. Stroud has been pretty pretty terrific so far. Um, the Steelers might not be one of the powers of the AFC, but they have picked themselves up off the deck pretty nicely after that embarrassing home loss to the 49ers in Week 1. And the Texans, they're not pushovers. I I think this line is about right. I generally love home dogs, but I'm not sure I can get behind the Texans as a home dog against the Steelers. All right, Sam, uh, taking a look at this line here for you. Fitz mentioned keeping Watt off of you is important, but this offensive line has had a lot of injury issues here to open the season. Do you think the health and talent of the offensive line can keep Watt off of CJ Stroud? I think so. I I think Houston is for real. I mean, CJ Stroud is making throws that make it seem like he should have been the number one overall pick in the draft this past (laughs) year. I mean, he's playing phenomenally. Again, you mentioned the the playmakers that they have, you know, on the Pittsburgh offense side, it's just gruesome. I mean, I know that they played San Francisco and Cleveland, but they are just down bad historically in EPA per play success rate, you know, all of these advanced metrics. And I just don't think that giving Najee Harris the ball is really an effective strategy, even against Houston. So I think you're getting the better quarterback with the points here at home for Houston. Again, a defense that has been able to stifle some, pretty good offenses so far this year. So I, uh, I'm taking Houston with the points, especially, I think I got him at plus three and a half this morning, which, uh, if you can get it on that side of three is, is huge for me. The Los Angeles Rams are going to travel to Indianapolis. We'll see how the Rams perform tonight. Uh, but in the meantime, we hope that we're getting, uh, Anthony Richardson back here for the Colts. The Colts stole a victory, uh, away from the Baltimore Ravens on the road. A huge win for this team. They are now two and one. 45 and a half is the number on this one. Obviously, <coughs> it's practically a pick em and understandably why. Uh, I guess a lot of it has to do whether or not you think Richardson plays and how big of an impact he makes. Right now, plus one and a half is where the Colts are at home. Sam, do you want to bet this line now or do you want to wait for more clarity when it comes to the quarterback situation? Definitely want to wait. Th- these are two teams that I just like can't get a read on so far it's because they were expected to be pretty bad going into the season and they've played competent above average football at, at certain points so far this season I, I do think you know the Gardner Minshew didn't play half bad this past week against a, a pretty good Ravens defense so I don't think the line really changes a ton it whether it's Minshew or Richardson but I do think that there's some more variability you're going to get with Richardson under center that could lead me to wanting the Rams in this situation. Pat, the 45 at DK right now you're getting is intriguing to me because if Richardson plays, the explosiveness he carries, I think the over is something you can actually look for in this game. What do you think? Oh, I'm with you, Joe. That's what I want to play. I don't want to play either side. I mean, we get this fun matchup of of two teams that we thought were going to be lousy, but have turned out to be like plucky and very entertaining to watch unexpectedly. Um, but yeah, I like the over a lot here. We've seen the Colts play at a breakneck offensive pace under Shane Steichen. Like that is how they want to play. Um, that's going to be very friendly to overs, I think. And the Colts, 
They have a veteran slot corner in Kenny Moore, but their outside cornerbacks are very inexperienced, and I think Matthew Stafford might be able to take advantage of that. I think there are going to be points in this game. Joe. Yeah, I tend to agree with that. Go ahead, Sam. Joe, you mentioned the explosive nature of Anthony Richardson. I I believe, if I remember correctly, he only has two pass attempts more than 20 yards downfield so far this season, which is kind of uh, different than people would have expected coming into this season, given how how much he was launching the ball at, at Florida. But I do think Steichen has been setting him up to get some easy completions and build his confidence. Yeah, I think the I think you're 100 percent right. And Steichen's a great offensive mind. I think we've already seen that in Philly for those last few years. Uh, and it's also well known around the league. A lot of league people talk about like Steichen's that guy that people are very excited to see get that head coaching job and what he can do with Richardson. But Richardson's ability to make plays with his legs. Those are the ones that really all of a sudden, you know, you got somebody, you know, it, you're in the red zone. It's third and eight. And next thing you know, he runs for a touchdown from the 18 yard line, like all of a sudden, like that's, that's the kind of stuff. And you saw it before he had the concussion that's backbreaking stuff for the opposing defenses, but also for totals because that's stuff that just should not happen, but it does when you have guys like Anthony Richardson with the ball in their hand. So I'm, I'm kind of where Pat is too. I think the, you leave this one to the coin flip. It is Uh, speaking of bad teams though, by the way, you kind of mentioned teams that we don't know who they are. Haven't played well. How about the Minnesota Vikings and the Carolina Panthers, everybody? How about the winless, uh, bowl here. Now somebody theoretically has to win. I guess they could tie, but we're going to get the red rifle again this week. So Carolina, of course, three point underdogs at home as we would expect them to be Minnesota's defense, not getting a lot of credit as they should not uh, 44 and a half is the number for this one. If you like the Panthers to get their first victory, well, you can get it plus 140 at Caesars fits. Uh, you know, The Vikings were handed many opportunities. They could not cash in on those opportunities. The defense is dreadful. I know Carolina is not a good football team. Theoretically, on paper, Minnesota should handle them, but they're only getting three points here. Do you think that Minnesota can finally pull themselves up by the haunches and do something here and win this game decisively by more than three points? They can, but I do like the money line bet on Carolina at plus 140 as, uh, you know, a home under, especially if Andy Dalton plays like with Andy Dalton starting. Yes. I mean, we saw Andy Dalton complete 34, 58 passes. They turned Andy Dalton loose against a bad Seattle defense that was missing uh, Tariq Woolen. And now he's going to be turned loose against a very bad Minnesota defense. Um, I, I like the Panthers in the money line, and I like the over here. Like, I think we're going to see a lot of offense. The Minnesota defense is not good, but Minnesota's offense is very good. They're going to put points up themselves. So I think we're going to see a shootout. Sam, I was very much on Minnesota this past week. I did not think they were the team that was going to come out uh, winless. Uh, they did. I don't know if I'm ready to learn to love again in week four. This game to me right now is is terrifying. But uh, Pat seemed very confident about Carolina's abilities to maybe pull one out of the uh, hat. Do you see that same path to victory for the Panthers? I am once again on the other side of Fitz here. I, I, like I mentioned I at the top why. of the show <laughs> that Minnesota has just been snake bitten by turnovers. Nearly a quarter of their offensive drives have ended in turnovers. They have nine total turnovers this season. Carolina defense could be without Frankie Luvu and Xavier Woods, who both left the game early on Sunday. Minnesota's offense is still exceptionally good. I mean, they have Justin Jefferson. They have Jet Jordan Addison. They have TJ Hawkinson. Like, this, this offense is exceptional. They have a 10.8% explosive pass rate. It's second in the league. I already took the over in this game as well. I think this could be a shootout. So I'm on, I'm on the same side as Fitz there, but I just think these teams can can score a bunch of points and their defenses aren't going to be doing much to to get in the way of that. All right, some uh, quarterback updates still yet to come in this next game because we have the New Orleans Saints with Derek Carr. They are two and one now. They did lose that game to the Green Bay Packers. So much of the happiness of my co-hosts here. Now, Derek Carr came away with a sprained AC joint, so he's probably going to miss a few weeks. I've had that injury myself. It's going to take a couple weeks for him to get back, but he should be able to play again this season, which means it's probably going to be Jameis Winston. Now, the Saints are three-point favorites at home to Tampa Bay. 
Tampa Bay, obviously, yet to play this evening against the Philadelphia Eagles, so we'll see what comes out of that game. But 41 is the number you're getting at Sugar House, 40 and a half at DK, so we're kind of in that same vein. If you like Tampa for the upset, plus 145, you can get that over at Sugar House. Uh, Sam, when you're looking at this one, and I mean, I feel like Winston's been inept. I think that's the best way to put it at this point. Like, you know, New Orleans had that game basically in the third quarter. That injury happened and all just fell apart for them. They should theoretically win this football game, but Tampa has shown that they've been a little pluckier than we think they would be. Do you think this is a perfect trap game for the Saints? I do think so. I think this is going to be an extremely low scoring game. Both defenses are currently top eight in EPA per play allowed early down success rate, passing success rate. So I think these teams are going to struggle to move the ball again with two quarterbacks that we both we, I think we all see as below average in Baker Mayfield and Jameis Winston. So I'd be looking to take Tampa Bay with the points because again in these low scoring games it's going to be a lot closer and getting potentially three three and a half points I think Tampa Bay's offense has been good enough to to keep them in their their game so far. Pat, your thoughts here on the Buccaneers, who I have to say have so far played well above my expectations. We'll see what happens against a real football team and the Eagles tonight. Like so, so now we have a little perspective. Maybe beating the Vikings opening week wasn't as impressive as we thought it was. So <laughs> Tampa is, is the underdog here, but with the backup quarterback, is this game a little closer, maybe perhaps in your mind? Yeah, I'm a little... I, I don't know what to make of the... Buccaneers offense yet Joe with Baker Mayfield um, doing well against the Vikings and Bears like we can't consider that as as counting for much it'll be interesting to see how he does against an Eagles defense that allowed I think like 179 passing yards per game on average in 2022 so um Yeah, this game is really a a hard one to peg. I mean we had the Adam Thielen ball now we've got the Jameis Winston ball and and Winston adds this air of unpredictability to this game. I mean, this is the guy who was a 30-30 quarterback the last time we saw him as a full-time starter. 33 touchdowns in 2019 with the Buccaneers, 30 interceptions. I mean, he could go nuclear and torch the Buccaneers defense. He could commit five turnovers. We don't know. Like Sam, if you force me to play it, I'd probably play the under, but I, I, it's a pretty low number, so I don't think I'm going to play that either. I'm, I'm just going to stay away from this game. And- <laughs> I think that that might be a good uh, a good practice there. But, you know, it, that total, that 41, it, it's, I mean, that is a low number here. You know, when you start scratching the surface of that, the 30s, that's when you know that Vegas is saying, hey, this is not going to be a fun game for the Daily Fantasy or for some other things too. And I don't want to hear about Winston revenge games because he's been in that division forever now. So he's he's in a backup there for the Saints or a starter at times when called upon. The Philadelphia Eagles are going to host the Washington Commanders. This in-division matchup will take place in Philadelphia. The Eagles are seven-point favorites as of now. Now, over on DraftKings, if you like the upset here of the Washington Commanders, it's plus 275. The number here in the total is 44 and a half. Fitz, uh, when you're looking at this one here, this feels like your normal sort of situation line here. If the Eagles go out on Monday night and smash here, do you think this line moves any bit? I do, which is why I've already grabbed the Eagles and locked them in (laughs) at seven points. Um, I'm betting them confidently, even on the short week of rest. Sam Howell turned to absolute jelly against a good Buffalo Bills pass defense, and the Eagles have a good pass defense as well. Um, The spread feels way too small to me, and I I think we're going to see it go up. You know, I do think the Eagles are going to beat the Buccaneers tonight, and that's going to move this line past a touchdown. That feels right to me. Uh, Sam, uh, your your friend in name, Sam Howell, made some bad decisions uh, on Sunday. Can't make those decisions against the Eagles. They're really going to put you in a bad spot, just like the Buffalo Bills did. Uh, I'm kind of where Pat is on this one. If you like the Eagles, you want to bet this one now, because the more time, I think, goes by, the more people will continue to grow confident in that Eagles uh, home field advantage. And the commander still relatively, although they were impressed in the first couple weeks, you know, when you start playing better football teams, this is what happens. So what are your thoughts on this early line? 
Yeah, Washington got dragged back down to earth after their fans were very optimistic, and, and I think rightfully so through the first two weeks. But I think Philadelphia should have no trouble just running all over this commander's defense. Philadelphia ranks fourth in rushing EPA per play and first in rushing success rate. I don't think it really matters who they have in the backfield, whether it's DeAndre Swift, Kenneth Gainwell, Boston Scott, all of these guys should be able to have some success. So I, I think this is a game where Philadelphia goes in even on a short week and just handles their business in uh, at Philadelphia. All right, this one could be the game of the week here. Buffalo Bills, two and a half point favorites at home against the Miami Dolphins. They're still favorites at home after Miami put up <laughs> 70 points on the Denver Broncos. But regardless, the number on the over, if you like it, minus 112, 51 at Sugar House, 53 and a half, minus 110 at DK. If you like Miami to win outright at plus 135, that's the number you're getting at Sugar House right now on the early line. Now, Sam, this is a fascinating one because the recency bias here, people are going to run to this total and bet the over, but it is an in-division matchup. These teams do know each other very well. There's a familiarity there as opposed to the teams you're playing out of division or even out of conference. Do you think that's a mistake to people running to this line and going over right away? I do think so. We saw in the Chargers-Vikings game this past week with a, a similar total line that you need pretty much everything to go right for a, a game with that high of a total to go over. There were red zone turnovers in that game that forced them not to score and and, and lengthen the game. And I don't know, I, I've been going back and forth all morning around which team I think is going to win. I think I take Miami with the points right now, but I, I'm just going to sit back and enjoy this game without any betting leans for right now. <laughs> to tell you the truth, Pat, I think the best number on this board uh, is probably the under of 53 and a half on DK, because that is inching to where, you know, that threshold of teams really got everyone's got to put it together. And I know I feel like a lot of money is going to come in on the over. So maybe this number even pushes higher. So maybe you wait if you like the over under. But I like Miami on the money line at plus 135 here. I'm I'm believing in what Mike McDaniel is doing here with this offense. What do you think? Joe, we're very like-minded this week. I, I, I like know. That. It's, um, it's not always the same. I, I, yeah. I hope so because last week I was on an island uh, and it did not work out. I drowned. <laughs> I drowned trying to swim off the island on Sunday night. So, yeah, you mentioned the totals already up to 53 and a half on DraftKings, and I, I do think it's going to climb even higher. Like we saw these teams combine for over 100 points of offense in week three. So, um uh, and if it does get up to 54 or higher, I will be betting the under two because as Andrew Erickson pointed out in the betting pros, uh, betting primer, which you should be reading, by the way, because then you'd see things like Erickson's recommendation to bet Donald Parham for a first uh, TD scorer at 30 to one, which came in and, and made people a lot of money. But um, so if it does get to 54, as Erickson pointed out, we have now seen it was four last season in this season and now it's five because we saw the chargers vikings game close at 54 games that close at 54 points or higher we've had five of them now since the start of 2022 all five have stayed under and so uh you know i think we're going to see that trend continue if this gets up to 54 i also like the the dolphins i mean i think they are the equal of the buffalo bills home field advantage is worth about two points if if i'm getting the dolphins in three especially like with that field goal number, I, I think we're getting like a point of value. So um, I don't know whether and they wait. could get Jalen Waddle back too, theoretically. Yeah, too. yeah they think that's what we're expecting. I'm, I'm just not sure whether to get it at three, wait and hope it goes up to three and a half or, you know, like it could go down to two and a half. And I, I can't figure out which way the line would be more <laughs> likely to move. Well... What you got to do then is set your notifications for the game notification in the betting pros app, the line alerts. That's what it's there for. See, look at that perfect segue. So if you haven't already download the betting pros app, sync all your sports book, but use the game notification. So you can basically say, hey, I want to keep an eye on this line here. Does it go to 54? Does it go to 54 and a half? I want to, this is the perfect example of how to use the line alerts and the game notification because I'm waiting for this one to grow because I think it will. People are going to keep talking in the media about the 70. They're going to be talking all about the Dolphins and they should. They earned that right. 
but I think it's going to inflate this number even more. So the number I'm waiting on, but I like the Dolphins here at the plus 135, but check out the line alerts and set those game notifications so you know when the lines move, then you can pounce on it. All right, let's get to the next game here. Uh, maybe not quite as exciting as the last one. Cincinnati Bengals and the Tennessee Titans. Again, a lot of uncertainty here. Man, Fitzy, I thought that that plus four that I got on the Titans was such a good number. I got that one early last week. Right after the show, I locked that bad boy in. It did not matter. The Titans were terrible. Uh, the offensive line uh, just laid down for Miles Garrett, as I would too. I don't blame them. Uh, but they are right now, at, you can get the Tennessee Titans at plus one and a half at Sugar House. You get Cincinnati at plus two and a half at Caesars. Nobody knows what to do with this game. You get 41 and a half on FanDuel, but 44 on the under on Sugar House if you like that one. And then it's even money for the Titans plus 115 at Caesars. This is your classic you go choose your own adventure situation. But I guess a lot of it has to do with the health of Joe Burrow. So if you think Joe Burrow sits this week, comes back healthy next week and has himself a game, well, then this is the time to go bet Cincinnati. But that's a big question mark, isn't it, Fitz? It is. I tend to think the Bengals are going to shut down Joe Burrow just for the long-term good, which makes me want to bet the under here now to lock it in at, at 42 and a half on DraftKings as of this morning. I also want to do something with the Titans, and and maybe like you, Joe, I'm guilty of giving too much credit to Mike Vrabel sometimes, and it's kind of burned me. It, it burned me too last week. Uh, I thought they were gonna, you know, turn it into like a rock fight with the the Browns and keep it close. Didn't happen. Um, but so rather than take the Titans like on the money line or or you know just a point and a half, I, I might try to tease the uh, put put the Titans in some sort of teaser where I'm getting more than a field goal with them. That that I kind of like. I think if we get no Joe Burrow, the Titans uh, do no worse than lose by a field goal or less. So that's that's kind of the way I'm trying to play this one. Sam, this one's really dangerous for me because I feel like I'm overreacting to my disdain of what happened this week, and the Titans will do exactly what Fitz said, turn this one into the rock fight, and then this one will be a low total, and then this one will be a Tennessee Titans, Titans victory when maybe they shouldn't win. What do you think, though, about the Titans? Because this is a really tough game on this schedule. It is, but Tennessee's defense just made Deshaun Watson look exceptionally good. He had, I think, his best game as a Brown. So if, I, if, if Joe Burrow comes out of the game tonight without any setbacks, then I'm going probably pretty heavy on... The Bengals, Tennessee has a pass funnel defense. Their, their rushing defense is top five in EPA per play, success rate, and explosive rush rate. But they're bottom eight in passing EPA per play and passing success rate. So the way that Cincinnati is going to be able to move the ball is through the air. And I think even with Joe Burrow at less than 100%, he'll be able to get you know, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, the ball in space and be able to carve up this Tennessee defense. So I'm I'm waiting until the game tonight is over to make sure that that Joe Burrow is is still intact. But if he is, then and this line stays with Cincinnati as the underdog, then I'll be taking them. Another in-division matchup, this one, AFC North, Baltimore Ravens 2-1. and one. They are plus two right now on Sugar House, traveling to Cleveland, which you can get a plus one and a half over at Bet Rivers. Again, everyone's trying to figure this out here. I don't think anybody has a good beat on how good or bad the Ravens really are or really how good or bad Deshaun Watson the Cleveland Browns are, especially without Chubb. 44.5 is the best number you can get for the under. 42.5, the best number at FanDuel you can get, by the way, for the over. Plus 105 on the money line if you like Baltimore to win outright. Sam, do you see any early value in this contest between the Browns and the Ravens? If you're getting 44.5, I'm going under easily i mean you know you mentioned miles garrett in in the previous game i don't know if you saw the clip of him motioning to one side of the field tennessee shifting two guys towards him him going back to the other <laughs> side and them shifting those to same two guys over to block him i mean he's a a force to be reckoned with this browns defense is through three games setting some historical rates right now the ravens offense still looks a little out of sorts with this new Todd Monken offense and the Ravens are just 
dealing with a ton of injuries to uh, Ronnie Stanley and Tyler Linderbaum were both out for the second straight week again. David Ajabo left early on Sunday while Adafe Owe and Marcus Williams were both out too. So I, I just think this game is going to go way under that 44 and a half going to be uh, one of those classic AFC North slugfests that you, we typically see in, in December, but get a little taste of in, in early October here. All right. You want to get any taste of this early line when it comes to Baltimore and Cleveland, Pat? Yeah. I mean, it's going to be, uh, as uh, Sam said, a classic AFC North slugfest, low scoring, close. Um, if, if I can get the total at anything 42 or higher, yeah, I'll sign me up for the under. Um, I, I saw 41 and a half on DraftKings this morning. So um, I'm eager to watch this game. I'm not so eager to bet it, though. 44. You can get that under at Bet Rivers right now. That's why I use Betting Pros. Sync all your sports books. And again, you can follow the guys too. Bettingpros.com slash Sam slash Fitz slash Joe. But not last week. You shouldn't have followed me last week. This week will be better. But again, I win with you. I lose with you. That's what we do here. And if you want to make your picks count, make sure you go and join our NFL contest too. Just go download the app, go to the community tab, click on the NFL contest, join or go to bettingpros.com slash NFL contest. It's free to join. All you got to do is make five picks every week, 100 picks throughout the NFL season. That's it. And the winner's going to get an absolute stunning JSN Jackson Smith and Jigba autograph jersey. We're also giving away monthly prizes, weekly prizes, upgrades to Fantasy Pros and Betting Pros Premium. You're going to get swag from our shops at Fantasy Pros and Betting Pros. So join the NFL contest, bettingpros.com slash NFL contest today. It's free. It's fun. Everybody likes free stuff. Now, somebody's going to come out with a free victory here is the Chicago Bears. Uh, now, uh, you know, winless, uh, going to face the winless Denver Broncos. Now, the Broncos on paper... They look like the better team, theoretically. Uh, they are two-point favorites on the road at Sugar House. Uh, 44 and a half is the number. You can get it at 45 and a half on FanDuel if you like the under. And then you get plus 125 if you think the Bears can actually get themselves together and win a football game. Pat, uh, I know you were keen on the Denver Broncos defense bouncing back after being grossly all-time embarrassed. Uh, can they bounce back after what happened? And can the Denver Broncos finally get a victory in the Sean Payton era? I think they're going to, Joe, and I am going to bet them. Uh, both of these teams are having major issues, obviously, but I think the Bears' issues are irreparable. Like, that <laughs> team is so beyond dysfunctional. It's um, like I, I could not have seen this coming, and the Bears are just a, a train wreck right now. They're completely off the rails. You know, I know the Broncos have problems of their own, and, man, I wanted to give Garrett Bowles a hug after hearing his post-game comments about how, like, he's been there for seven years and all he's ever done is lost, and, like, I felt so bad for the guy. But I do think the Broncos can get it together. They played a close game and lost to the Raiders at home in Week 1. They should not have let one slip away against the Commanders in Week 2. Um, yes, things totally fell apart against the Dolphins in Week 3. But I, th I think they can get it back together against a team that I don't think can get it back together, the Bears. I'm taking the Dolph, uh, the Broncos, and I'd lay more than three and a half points. Like, if this went up to five and a half, I think I'd still bet the Broncos. All right, Sam, your feelings about these two teams, both headed towards the downward trajectory, but somebody's got to come out. So who comes out of this one with a W? I'm with Fitz. We've reached the the 37 minute mark in the pod, and I think this is the first time I uh, <laughs> agree with him on a side. There we go. But Good. Both of these teams were just embarrassed on Sunday in in different ways, and. I think I give Denver a, a much better chance to bounce back. Low key, I don't think their offense in Denver is that bad. They've had some success. They're in the top half, half of the league in a lot of efficiency metrics. They're not blowing anyone away, but against a devastatingly bad Bears defense, I, I think they come away with an easy victory here. I, I like some alt alternate spreads on Denver in this game to, you know, just really put it to the Chicago Bears. All right. The Las Vegas Raiders are going to go to LA to play the Chargers. The Chargers are four point favorites at home. 15 and a half is the number. Jimmy Garoppolo should play in this one. Plus 175. You'd like the upset. Sam, your thoughts on this contest here with Vegas and the Chargers. 
I think the Chargers are clearly the better team. Their offense is firing on all cylinders. If not for Tua, I think, and, you know, being one and two, I think Herbert would easily be in the MVP discussion. He has been playing exceptionally well this year. I think, you know, obviously the the Chargers defense isn't that great, but the Raiders defense can't really make a, a, a stop to save its life. They just allowed the pittsburgh offense to look good so i'm i'm laying the points with los angeles here mike williams out for the year torn acl we just got that news breaking while we were recording the show fits impact here at all on this line for you with mike williams done and then having to move to qj and uh, maybe you know some more palmer in this lineup too with this over at 50 I don't think it's going to move the needle on the line, to be honest with you, Joe. And um, maybe I'm going to get Brandon Staley here and uh, the Chargers head coach is going to make some sort of terrible decision that costs me my wager here. But I'm going to continue my full season fade of Josh McDaniels. I've, I've bet against him every week so far. I'm going to keep betting against McDaniels and the Raiders and, uh, you know, usually is a turns a, a profit for me. All right, Fitz, uh, Dallas Cowboys suffered their first loss. They are now 2-1 and one. Arizona Cardinals. They are still six-and-a-half-point favorites hosting New England this week. 42 is the number, sometimes 42-and-a-half. You're getting a Sugar House, 42 over a FanDuel. If you think New England can win, it's plus 280 on the money line. I do not. I don't think this offense is good enough. The defense is respectable, that's for sure. But still, uh, look, Dallas, I expect them to bounce back this week. The question is, is this too big of a number here? Too much credit for the Cowboys at six-and-a-half, Fitz? It is too big a number for me to play, Joe. You know, I, I want to believe the Cowboys are going to be out for vengeance after uh, that toe stubbing in Arizona. But I, I do wonder if the loss of, of Trayvon Diggs oh, maybe I changes some, something. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's a, a big deal. Um, uh, like, I don't know if Mac Jones can capitalize on it. And we know that the Cowboys can still get after the quarterback, certainly with Micah Parsons. So, um, yeah, I just like I think the lines are the line and the total are both spot on here i just don't want to bet this game at all well speaking of joneses too the secondary for the new england patriots was missing all their joneses all three of them for this past matchup so that's also a problem on the other side here for the new england patriots do you see any value here sam early on on this cowboys six and a half number i don't i to i agree with fitz again i think all these lines are are spot on i think people will mm -hmm. overreact a little bit to dallas losing this past week and i'll, I'll talk about that in a minute here with our our next game well, let's talk about San Francisco, who is undefeated, looks great. Arizona has, look, for all this crap we gave the Arizona Cardinals organization, they have been competitive on the field. They're showing up for every game, even when they shouldn't be showing up for some of these games. 49ers, though, are still 14-point favorites at home. 14 and a half on the plus side for Arizona. You get a Sugar House, 14 at FanDuel, 41 to 42. That's about the range you're getting this number. Arizona, this will be an epic upset for them at plus 650. Sam, uh, 14 is a big number. Can the 49ers cover it? I think they can, but I make this San Francisco by 13, so I'd probably take Arizona. Their offense has not been abysmal to your points. They're fifth in early down EPA per play and success rate. They've played against Washington, the Giants, and Dallas, who are all not terrible defenses, and, and Dallas is a, a great defense, so... I think they're going to be able to have some success. I, I, I'm not betting this because I, I still do worry that Arizona comes back down to earth, but there's a real scenario where the Art Cardinals could have been 3-0 and so far this season. You're right. I, I think the, the one thing I take away, though, Pitt Fitz, is the, you know, because they beat the Cowboys yesterday, I do think San Francisco goes, okay, we got to take this game very seriously. It's in our division you know, like we, we better put a pounding on the Arizona Cardinals because this team's going to show up. So in some ways, I feel like that victory is almost like a wake up call without a wake up call for San Fran, who, by the way, also has extra rest for this game. Yes, exactly, Joe. I want to grab the 49ers <laughs> while I can at, at only two touchdowns. I mean, look at how they just squeezed the life out of the New York Giants in week three. <laughs> sure and did. now they do get that extra rest, as you pointed out. Mm. Uh, and, and look, the Cardinals are already messing up this whole tanking thing. I think they need to come to their senses and get back to the business of losing, uh, which behooves the franchise long term. Um, yes, they beat the Cowboys, but the 49ers have shown they know how to handle an overmatched opponent. Like even a, a you know, fairly closely matched opponent. They just crushed the Steelers in week one. Like, I, I think this line should be at least like 15 and a half. I want to get it now while it is still this low. 
Kansas City Chiefs are going to travel to New York. They are eight and a half point favorites. Uh, plus nine, you can get at Sugar House on the Jets. 43 to 43 and a half. That's kind of the range right now you're seeing on the line. Plus 350 if you think the Jets can win, and I don't. Uh, let's talk about this one, Fitzy, here. I mean, Zach Wilson has been historically bad. Let's just lay it out there. That's how it's been. The numbers bear it out. It's period, end of story. But the defense is still very good here for the Jets. Can the defense keep this eight and a half in check? Yeah, boy, Patrick Mahomes versus Zach Wilson. Talk about, uh, you know, David versus Goliath type of matchup. It's like I, me I and Shaquille want... O'Neal playing one-on-one <laughs> basketball. That's pretty exactly. much what it feels like. Yeah. I, I want to lay the points here when I look at that quarterback <laughs> matchup, but I, I do still have the utmost respect for the Jets' defense. And they mm-hmm. are not – the Jets aren't going to roll over like the Chicago Bears did for the Kansas City Chiefs in week four. So I, I don't think I'm going to play this one. Sam, your thoughts on this one? I'm playing it. Give give me Patrick Mahomes and the points. The, the, the defense is <laughs> really go. good. I, I do like the Jets defense, but man, Zach Wilson is just so bad. And I think Kansas City will be able to make his day as, as bad as it has been so far this season. Yeah, I agree. The pass rush is back with Chris Jones, too. Eight and a half is actually, this is one of the numbers I like a lot. I want to get this locked in now before it grows, because it will. Uh, next here and final, the New York Giants at home. We don't have clarity about Saquon. I would expect him not to play, considering all the information Dr. Chow gave us on the podcast last week on Fantasy Pros. It seems like he's going to be a couple weeks with the high ankle. Plus one and a half is what you're getting here. The uh, Seattle Seahawks, one and a half point favorites. 44 and a half is the number, sometimes 45, like over on FanDuel. And then plus 118, if you like the Giants to win at home outright. Sam, Let's lock this one up. Giants, Seattle, any early value here in week four? Give me the Seahawks and the points. I think their offense, after stumbling a bit week one against the Rams, has has come back and had two great showings. Geno Smith is looking a little bit better. Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet are a great one-two punch in that backfield. Defense hasn't been stellar by any means, but I, I don't think Daniel Jones is that big of a threat to to put the pressure on Seattle. So give me Seattle with the points. I agree. I'm with Sam minus one and a half minus one Oh nine. You're getting on that one. Fitz, are you three for three on this one? Heck no. Let me close the show with some disagreement. (laughs) Give me, give me the home dog on nine days rest. And like, I feel like the Seattle defense could be the get well card that the Giants offense really needs at this point. (laughs) I I like the over here. I think this game has sneaky shootout potential as bad as these two defenses are. I think it's going to be a fun way to wrap up week four. But yeah, I like the home dog. Give me the Giants. All right. We want to hear from you guys. What are your favorite picks for week four early and often? Drop them in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel. Click the bell to let goes ding. And you just might win a James Cook autographed jersey. Join our NFL contest too at bettingpros.com slash NFL contest and download the betting pros app so you get all the best lines and make the best decisions and turn on those line alerts too as these lines are going to move throughout the week that'll do it for us but the story of the game goes on for Sam and Pat I'm Joey P we'll see you next time kids